Hello everyone, this is Michael from ePapery. Today I thought I would just go through a few of the things that I use as hidden journaling spots. So I have um, 15 journaling spots that I have utilized in the past. Um, most of these are fairly simple. So I'm not going to be doing like a full tutorial on all of them. Um, so if you feel like you want a full tutorial on any of them, just uh, let me know and we can certainly do that for you. Um, I don't claim to have designed um, or thought of any of these ideas. So um, I'm not going to indicate where they came from because many different YouTubers have um, have utilized them. So all right, so 15 that I have. Let's get started. Whoops. I do have a list here so that I can remember what I'm doing. <laughs> Okay, so the first one is um, very simple, but very effective and can be used not only as a secret journaling spot, but also as a spot where you can add uh, maybe small ephemera to be used in a journal or um, like I was thinking of putting some of my crocheted Christmas things inside. So basically what it is, is it's the bottom of a bag, and when you glue the bottom of the bag to your page, and then when you pull it up, it opens into a spot where you can put, you know, a journaling, a letter or a piece of coffee dyed paper, or again, some ephemera or whatever in that. And you can also just glue it on both sides and then put a tag use this as as like a belly band um, also so that's the first one and all i did with this one is i have a it's um, a fairly small lunch bag um, oh my goodness i'd say this one is about ten and a half by five now, I just always save the bags that I get from various places. So what you need to do is you just need to take your scissors and cut right where the bottom of the bag is folded. And this piece can be used, um, for example, in a, in a journal. You can fold this over and stick it in your signature um, and use it as pockets if you want to do that. Or I'm sure that you can come up with other ideas for using it. So I do save those also. So here you go. You've got your um, your bag. Turn it over to the side that doesn't have the bottom on it. And this is where you would decorate and you would put a pull tab here to bring it open on your page. So that's number one. Let's move on to number two. The second one is an envelope fold. And this again is an extremely simple one. Um, and I don't have one of these that's decorated up, but um, so here, hopefully you can see this. Um, here you can see it. So you would glue it on your page wherever you want. And you could add more than one. You could have one going this way, one going that way, or have two or three going down, depending upon the size that you make. And it's just a flip down so that you can write 
on that, the inside of the envelope. Very, very, very simple. Now, this one that I made is using a rectangular piece of paper that is about three inches by six inches, a little less than that. And basically what you do is you find the center of that piece of rectangle, and I just make a mark there, and then you would fold the corners down. Oh, that one's a little crooked, but... <laughs> Okay, where that center mark is, okay, so you've made the, the triangle. Um, now, I glue these down, but you wouldn't have to. Um, if you didn't, then you could open this up and you could also um, journal on, on that spot also. And once you've done that, you just fold up however you want to make your envelope. So I just did, on my other one, I just did two. just did one fold or two panels here okay and then fold down your envelope top um, actually I want to leave some space between my envelope top and and the rest of the journaling spots because you don't want to be folding exactly on the line so of where you're paper starts. So you want to fold, just leave just a little bit um, so that you don't have a problem with it folding properly. Now if you want to, you can stick something here um, to keep it closed. Um, a small piece of ephemera where you only glue on um, the bottom part of it and then just tuck it in. So there you go. That is a folding envelope. I call this one a card topper or hidden journal. Um, I cannot remember what other people have called it, but in this one you have a pocket here Okay, pocket there, and then this, the top of your card comes out and it shows you a hidden journaling spot. So, and if I can get it back in there, <laughs> okay, and put it in there like that, and because your picture goes all the way to the top, um, it doesn't look like there's something there. Now you could add a tab or a piece of ribbon or something on this if you wanted to um, to show that this pulls out. I didn't on this particular one. Now I make these with envelopes, um, with my junk envelopes, but you can also do it I'm sure with a, with a piece of paper. Um, just make an envelope either with your um, envelope maker tool or um, just by hand make an envelope. Um, I used an envelope like this. This one is about four by eight and a half, roughly. That's what it is. And so what you would do on this one I'm just going to use my glue stick here. Just close it, close this up. Okay. Ooh, I just got glue all over my mat. Okay, so you would close up the envelope. Okay. And then fold up however far up you want. 
Um, I think I'm going to fold this one up just about two inches, two and a quarter inches. Okay. And use my bone folder here to do that. Okay. Now I'm not going to finish decorating this one, but basically what you do is you put your paper here that you want, um, notch out in your paper here and then notch out for your pocket. And when you're done, you pick a place on your picture where you think, you know, it's not going to look too bad. And then you just basically cut the envelope. I would say you probably need at least, um, at least an inch, if not two inches or an inch and a half. It's uh, much easier to put the paper on first before you cut it. And then what you would do is you would cut down um, a piece of card or, you know, whatever you want to use. I used an index card before, but you would cut it down to fit pretty snugly into this top thing and glue it down. And that's basically what that one is. And then as far as using it on your page, you could um, glue it on like this entirely down, or you could, um, of course you would not want to glue this part down, but um, you could glue it on here, here, and here. And if you wanted to, put another tag behind that, um, however you wanted to do it. So that is that one. I call that um, a card topper. I don't know why. Because <laughs> I don't remember what anybody else called it. Um, a belly band. Now, I have um, a couple of different ways of of making journaling spots with belly bands this is one um, i made i think i had a video on this one before too and again i made this with an envelope okay so i just took the envelope cut it down depending upon how wide you want your your spot cut down your envelope and you could actually make two of them out of one envelope and then um, cut open the envelope, uh, put writing paper on the inside of it, and decorate the outside of it. And then, of course, just glue down on the bottom piece at the top and the bottom. And then you would have a belly band with a flip out writing space. So that's how I would do that one. I'm going to bring out my my little journal here. And I believe, okay, did I put a, I might have put a paper clip on there. Let's see if I can find one. Okay, um, here's one that I did in, in um, this journal. It's a belly band, flip out makes the writing space. This one also has a tag in it. So um, this one I made out of the um, window envelope. Okay, and I believe I have a, a tutorial on on our YouTube channel um, for this. And so then I have the tag here. And you also can use it as a belly band to put other things in. So that's that one. Um, I also have another tutorial where I did a, um, a different type of a belly band that had a flip up um, on it that would make um, a hidden journaling spot. Now the next couple of them, um, I am not sure that I, I don't know, I'm sure other people have done this, but I did, I did design these on my own. 
Um, this one, uh, and I had this for sale last year in our um, Etsy shop. And this I call my stocking hidden pocket. And um, basically what I did is I drew a stocking. Um, I covered it with paper and also the back of it. And then this candy pulls out and there's a small, can't make it too big because the stocking isn't that big, a uh, journaling spot in there. But I thought that was kind of cute. This is crocheted, but you wouldn't have to do that. You could just put some um, designer type paper on there. Um, I think what I, I will try and do, um, as I said, I had these and I think I still have them listed um, in the Etsy shop for sale. But um, what I might do is see if Erin can scan in the patterns that I have and um, put them on the Etsy shop so that if you wanted to make one yourself, you could do that. I thought they were kind of cute. I put it in um, the Christmas journal I made for my great niece last year. So that's one that I did for her. Another one that I, I did uh, in that same journal is Santa's bag with the presents. And again, I have a pattern for this that I will see if Erin can, you know, scan in and, and uh, put on the, in the shop. And that basically, this one basically, you pull out the presents and there's a journaling card. So, and again, this is crocheted, but it wouldn't have to be. So there's that one. Um, like I said, I think those are kind of cute. Okay. The next one is one that I have seen um, in, on other channels and even on card making channels, but what you do is you take a circle, okay, and you cut it in half. Now, I then ran it through an embossing folder, which, you know, you don't have to do that. But what you're going to do here is make a little Christmas tree that when you fold it out, you can journal on. Um, so I think, if I can remember how I did this or how they do this. Okay, so... And it's probably best to do this on um, double-sided paper, but I'm going to put it, am I going to put it that way? Yes, I'm going to put it this way. Okay, and so then you're going to take and fold down part of this top. Now... Um, Sometimes you're going to have to fudge a little bit on how how much you do, and it depends upon how you know how much you want your tree to stand out. But okay, so I'm going to fold that there like that. That's that one, and then kind of right where this is, you fold it back on itself. So we're going to fold it back on itself a little bit here. Oop, let's see if we can't get it straighter than that, which. And of course, this this is cardstock, so it's a little bit more difficult to to do. Burnish that down. Okay, so there you've got that. Then you take this and you fold it back on itself again, and make it line up with the end part. Okay, and that is your Christmas tree. And then when you um, pull it apart like this, you've got some space in here where you can do some journaling if you want to. So, And if you put it on a page, you're basically going to glue down this part here. Or if you didn't want to glue it all down, you could leave a space where you can stick a tag in there too. But 
glue it on your page like this. You could even add a star or whatever you want, an angel or whatever you wanted to on there. But anyway, that is the Christmas tree fold. Okay, here is a very simple one. Um, I call this a pocket flip, but I made this one out of a book page and it's basically, I guess I didn't bring a book page here, but the book page I cut down and this book page is five by almost seven, not quite seven inches. Okay, and then I took and I folded up um, about three inches here, okay, and then I took this piece and folded it down, and it, you know, it, in this particular case, it hangs over the edge, but if you didn't want it to, you could just, you know, um, fold it exactly the same as the other one. And then what you do is you glue here and here on the inside of this to make a pocket here. And then this would flip up for journaling. And then as far as putting it on the page, you know, this one's kind of, kind of big, but you could put it on the page like this. You could glue here and here and leave a tuck here. You could glue here and here and here and leave a tag space there. So there's lots of different ways you can um, use that one too. So that is what I call the pocket flip. The next one, um, I do remember where I got this one from, and this one was from um, Judy at, um, oh goodness, is it Rose Vintage? I think. Um, and I hadn't made this for a while, so I went to make it <laughs> the other night, and I'm like, oh, okay, how did this go? Because, and this one came out rather wonky, but it gives you the idea, okay? So you've got this flip up here. You can have writing space there, okay? This would make a pocket if you put, like, paper clips or something on each side, which is what I did. Um, and then otherwise, when you pull it down like this and you open it up like this, you have all of this journaling space in here. So let me see if I can quickly show you um, how I did this. I think I figured out an easier way this time than what I did before. I do have a video on this, but again, um, I think I... Um, struggled with it. So what I did here is we have an eight and a half by eight and a half square. Okay. What I did is I took a ruler okay, and I put a line from corner to corner here, pencil line, just so that I knew what the middle of that was. Okay. So then what I did is I took the tip, and I don't know, are you able to see this or not? I have such a small space here. Um, I took the tip here, and I put it right on where my cutting line would be, or on the edge of my scoreboard. And what I did here, the reason I have the line is so that you can put it down and make sure that this is straight. Okay. Um, so I just put a tip up top and this tip on the bottom, but it's on the same score line so that you know that you're, you're straight. Okay. And then what you can do is um, take and score. Now I scored at four inches but um, I don't have my tip all the way over there either. There we go. Put my tip on the edge, which, okay. And so you just make sure that you're, 
line is straight on the top and the bottom. Okay, so then I went in four inches and scored. Okay, turn it over and do the exact same thing on this one. Now I'm putting this on my first score line. So on the bottom, okay, move things around here so that I can maybe get this where you possibly can see it. So I put this on, on like, you know, the first score line on this particular board. You can just pick a score line and make sure that you've, you know, um, I've got this on like six and a quarter. And then make sure that down here you're on the same score line so that you know that you're straight. And then, oh, what did I do with my bone folder? Okay. <laughs> oh, some days. Okay. And then I just, again, scored this on four. Whoops. Make sure you stay on the same line. Okay. Now, hopefully, and this is not going to work. See, I told you. <laughs> yeah, it does. Okay. Um, burnish those down. Okay. Now, what happens here is you've got to make sure this point isn't going to go over the other fold, which it shouldn't if you um, have them equal. Okay, so then you have this, um, or this, depending upon how you want to do it. Um, then, what I did is I took this and, um, um, again, I put this on the edge here. I want to kind of make sure that I'm somewhat straight here okay and then I hopefully this is I want to move this down a little bit okay so I got that there and I got that on this again is the okay that's the first score line on my particular scoreboard and then you want to again make sure that it's the same on the bottom okay and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to score at two inches okay so that you have that little triangle and then you're going to take the line that you scored on I'll fold it so you can see it better Okay, the line that you scored it on and make sure that it's straight on there. Okay, and then you're going to go and score another score at, um, oh goodness, I'm trying to remember what I did it at. Uh, let's see. <laughs> okay, Michael. I did it on four. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I did it on four again. Okay, so is that the one I got? Yep, yeah, okay. So I'm going to take this where it is and make sure it's straight. Now, if I do that on four here, it's going to be a big one, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it at, let's see, let's do it on two and a half. Or, I can't read my numbers, they're so little. Oops, I am so sorry. Um, okay, we're going to do it on two and a quarter. So, so I'm going to take this again. I'm going to line this up on my scoreboard. Okay, and this time I'm going to score at two and a quarter. Okay. Okay. And then you fold up on that and burnish. Okay. 
Now you have to make sure that your lines are burnished quite well so it folds well for you. Okay, so then here, this folds up like that. And you might want to play with it just a tiny bit to make sure that it's, you know, folding properly. Okay, and then this folds down like that. So now you have your pocket and your journaling spot here. You can flip this and put paper on this and, and journal on that. Um, and the other thing that I did that was different from, now see this paper is cracking. This is probably a little bit um, too stiff of a piece, piece of paper or cardstock. But what I did then was I just put this in my board like this, trying to line it up so that we have these points at the same place. And then I just cut off that point and made it into a tag shape like that. And then so, and you wouldn't glue anything. Um, here you would just leave it open and then it would fold out like this now gluing it onto your page you would want to do that and you can again do that however you want to do um i guess i i wouldn't glue it like here because that would make it difficult to maybe put like a paper clip or something on it to to um, to close it. If you wanted to do a fancy paper clip, you could do that. Like put it here, and then that would keep it closed. Okay, so you could glue it down. You know here on the back side here um, and here and again that would make a tuck spot behind here too if you wanted to um, but i wouldn't glue it on this side because that won't give you a spot to put your paper clip but anyway that one gives you a very large journaling spot hidden journaling spot so I like that one. A slit pocket, and I don't have one, but I do have one in this journal. Here it is, and I'm sure that you've all seen these before too. Um, this one is made out of vellum, or actually I think it's tracing paper, and I have this tag in here that that pulls out of this slit. So technically that's, you know, a hidden spot there in there and you know basically all you do with this one is you make a tag and then you put a hole now I used um, you can use one of two things if you've got a, a slot punch I have one that is um, one that is um, a stamping up punch and of course I'm trying to find it I can't find it I did with it well anyway I have one I have one that is a stamping up punch otherwise what you could use also no not that one If you've got a slot punch for ribbons you can use that too so what you would do is you would put this in here and, and slot it as many times as you needed in order to um, accommodate your tag and then I just 
put this on around it. I did another piece of paper and put slots in it. And I just um, glued that around it for a little bit of extra decoration. And then you would glue that or sew that to your page. So that is how that one is made. Okay, so that's the slip one. The next one is, um, I call it the Cory Dahman bookmark. So if you watch Cory Dahman's channel, you've probably seen it. You just take two pieces of card, um, cut them down to whatever size you want to, and then um, accordion fold a piece of paper how big you want and then glue it to the the two pieces so that you have this fold out journaling spot that's an extremely simple one but very effective for um for your hidden writing spot hidden envelope so this is basically um, an envelope which you can glue down here and here and if you do that on your page you also then would have a spot here to tuck a tag or something in but it basically is a square piece of paper okay and um, you fold it in half diagonally okay so diagonally you fold it in half like this if you can see what I'm doing with this paper underneath okay so you fold it in half diagonally like this okay then you unfold it and you take this corner and you fold it up to where your fold line is and you fold it again and then what you do is you take and fold in these corners um, the appropriate amount that you're going to need. You don't want to fold it in too far. It's going to look silly, not going to look quite like an envelope. But what you want to be able to accomplish is to put one of these sides inside the other one as a closure. So, and just line it up with the bottom and do that press it down okay and then you just take and fold down your top um, now i wouldn't fold it right down to um, the other fold but leave some space between the top and your actual um, flap and fold that down so what you have here then as you flip this up, if you want to, you could stick something else in here. But if you undo it like this, then you have all of this space to journal on. So that's another really nice one. And it's simple to do. When you fold your flaps over, you just put one inside the other. And then you can decorate it however you want to decorate it. And again, you know how to put it on your um, your page. Again, you could have more than one if you wanted, you know. And you could glue it on your page however you wanted to. You can glue it just on each side, um, and still have a spot to put it here. You can just glue it on down here and here and have a tuck so many different ways to to do it another very common one is um, what they call a fabric flip now this one i made and i just um, took four pieces of fabric and you just kind of layer them up however you want to do that in different sizes and then maybe add a piece of lace to it or whatever. Now I hand stitched this, 
but you don't have to. You can put a piece of lace, glue a piece of lace on top of it, or take a piece of cardstock and put on top of it, however you want to do it. And then you just glue it across the top here on your page. And then when you flip it up, you've got hidden journaling available there. So that's a fabric flip. Um, this one, I call it a um, playing card gatefold uh, journaling spot. And what I did here is I just took a piece of, um, this is four and a half by six and a half paper. Okay. And all I did was I turned down the sides on, on each end here. Okay. Which you will glue down. And then you just basically fold the piece of paper. Um, now, I believe what I did is I left this one over here a little shorter than, or little, not as wide, sorry, not short, but not as wide as this one. So this one's a little smaller than this side. Um, so ex for example, this one is now about one and a half, one and a half, and this one is like one and a quarter, something like that. Okay, so then you've got those together like that. And then all I did was take a decorative um, playing card, which I happen to have some of these and I just glued one side of the card here and then it would flip out like this and you'd have journaling. Now you can decorate this side of the card too if you want to. I didn't but you can and again this can be used like this. Um, you could glue both sides down and put a tag behind it you could glue this and this and make it a tuck. Um, so many different, you know, ways you can do it. You could even glue it like this, almost like a belly band and flip it down like this and up like that. Um, all kinds of different ways that you can do that one. And then last, I have, um, and I, you know, I hadn't done this one for a while either, so I needed to practice. <laughs> I used to do this an awful lot, but um, I call this a square fold. I'm believing this is probably an origami. Um, but what it basically is, is a square piece of paper that's folded so that you can, okay, now, if you want to, you can put it on your paper however you want. You know, you could put it on like this, like this, however you wanted to put it on. But you would lift up one corner and the other part would be total. This, this opposite side would be glued down on your page. And when you pull this, it opens up and there you have a bunch of journaling spots. Well, I'm going to make this one. four and three quarters. Okay. Four and three quarters because that's as big as I can make it with this scrap of paper. Okay. And then you're going to make it four and three quarters this way. Okay. So you can make these any size you want. Um, like I said, this one was um, I believe like five and a half by five and a half. This one is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Okay, so fold it in half. Line up your edges as best that you can. Okay, and fold it and burnish it. Now what I would do at this point is turn around and fold it backwards that same way because you want this burnished both sides so that it'll eventually fold into that 
into that square we're going to use as the journaling spot easily instead of fumbling with it like I have a tendency to do. <laughs> okay, so then I'm going to turn this inside out and fold it again. Burnish it again, I mean. Okay, then we're going to take and we are going to fold it diagonally. It may not be exactly perfect, but it should be close. Okay. And what I'm going to do again is I'm going to fold it on the other side. Just turn it inside out and fold it again. Okay. And then we are going to take this and fold this one up into a diagonal position. Okay. And fold that down and burnish and then turn it to the opposite side and burnish it well from that side also. Now, <laughs> okay, so what, what needs to happen is that these two folds here are going to be like mountain folds. So once you got it folded, turn it on a diagonal like this. And then these two separate folds here, or these two sides, need to fold down into a, into a, uh, like a little triangle on each side. And then this comes down like that. Okay? And then when you put it on your page, okay, like I said, you can put it on however you want. And you could put it on like this if you want. You can put it on like this, however way you want to put it on. But at any rate, the back square gets totally glued down. Okay? And then when you pull up on this corner, the paper will come out, and that's your journaling spot. Okay? And like I said, after you've had it burnished, after you've burnished it many times, it will like automatically start to fold that way without putzing with it too much. Okay. And those you can make any size as long as they're square. Okay. So there is my 15, I hope that's 15, I think it was, 15 different types of hidden journaling spots. And I know that um, you can come up with a lot more than that. Um, many people have different types of hidden journaling spots. These are fairly simple, with the exception maybe of the um, the two that, that I designed and made, the Christmas bag and the Christmas stocking. So, if you um, need additional tutorial on something, let me know. If you're looking for um, a pattern of the stocking and, or the Santa bag, let me know also, and I will have Erin put the patterns, scan them in and put the patterns on our Etsy shop. Okay, guys, um, that is all for today, and we will see you again soon. Bye! Bye.